for so long, the Bison Sioux game meant so much. At stake, state pride, the nickel trophy, and a whole lot more. But in 1997, a dose of reality. Grand Forks and Fargo experiencing the worst flood in 500 years. Spring practice for the Sioux was washed away. The Bison stopped practice to help save homes and the city. The human spirit in the valley was truly tested. Life has changed for everyone, and after months of rebuilding, there is also renewal. The valley, flooded and scarred, is back. Now, on this October afternoon, football seems important once again. For the 104th time, the Bison meet the Sioux, the state pride, the nickel trophy, and a whole lot more. Shane Allen will kick it for North Dakota. Jake Morris and Nino Zezza are deep for North Dakota State. Everybody's on their feet. Allen with the kick and a low bouncer coming up at about the 19 yard line to Matt Roller who is smacked as he crosses the 31 yard line. And I think that was Ryan Govan, number 96 who've gotten him there. There's Josh Keyes, number 51, coming off the field. As we check the NDSU offense, led by Kevin Feeney, who tied a school record with four touchdown passes last week. Morris and Roller in the backfield. Dahl, the one replacement at right tackle. First and 10 for the Bison at the 35-yard line. Babich loves to throw on the first game of the uh, first play of the game. And that was Nino Zezza in motion. Feeney options back, a juggling catch by Jake Morris, who is smacked by Eric Gunderson, number 11, the cornerback from Detroit Lakes, who is starting today. First and 10 from the 45 is where they mark it, just across the 45. This time Morris goes up the middle, breaks loose across midfield and up to the North Dakota 46-yard line. He'll be about a yard shy of the first down. That's part of the new package put in by Bob Babich and Mark Maurer. Just a little isolation play. Jake Morris dots the eye and just the Rams up front taking care of the defensive lineman and possibly a linebacker or two. And Morris, who weighs 205 pounds, can actually deliver a blow, not just take one. Jake doing a little better than his average of six yards per carry so far. Second and two now. And Feeney puts it up for the first time today. Stralo got it at the nine yard line. Tim Stralo beating Grant Grimes on that play. The Bison love to call second and short a throwaway down. They think they can get that on third down, so why not throw it deep? They've done it a number of times this year. And here's Feeney impressing people with a strong arm. And Stralo does a nice job of protecting the, the ball away from the defender. So first and goal for the Bison from the nine. Roller the fullback and Morris the tailback. It is Morris. Had a little room and gets it up to the five. There has been just one time this year when the Bison have not produced some type of points on their opening drive. That was in Northern Colorado. And as it turned out, the Bison got the ball back after a quick interception by the Bears and scored. But they have produced some type of points in nearly every opening drive this year. And we should point out, this is only NDSU's second road game of the season. For a while there, Bob Babich didn't think he had to play road games. Thought it was part of his contract. But it gets tough from here because NDSU has just one home game the rest of the way. Feeney cuts it in, and Feeney, oh, he takes a hit at about the two-yard line. Third and goal at the two. Morris ahead. Touchdown! North Dakota State gets on the board with 12-15 remaining first quarter. Well, one impressive opening drive for North Dakota State. A little option, a little isolation play, and a deep pass to put the Bison on the board. Yep. For Jake, his fifth rushing TD of the year. Now Ken Johnson, the freshman from Lino Lakes, Minnesota, in to attempt the point after. Yes. And it 
is now 7 to nothing, North Dakota State. On the Subway scoreboard, we'll be back with more after this break. And back deep to receive, Chris Schranz, the leading kick returner in the nation. 40 yards per return. He had a 96-yarder in the first home game. And this is Schranz drilled by number 49 of North Dakota State, Eric Lund. Forget about that 20-yard average. Sean Fort Fredericks average. leads the NDSU defense that has pitched three shutouts this year, two in the North Central Conference. And what a job they've done despite all the injuries. Matt Swanson is a cornerback, number six. He started the year about, uh, oh, number five on the depth chart. In fact, in one game, they had a fifth stringer and an eighth stringer playing in that secondary, but they've done a marvelous job. All-American Sean Fredericks poised here for third and seven. And Plancher getting some protection, and he'll just run out of bounds at the 22. North Dakota State leading 7-0 here with 8.22 to go, first quarter. Plancher directing traffic, now he keeps it and crosses the 30 up to the 32-yard line before Ben Oneman, the linebacker, makes the stop. And the Sioux will have to punt it again here. It's twice now on third down that Clancher has been running out to the near side. From the 31, NDSU gives to Jake Morris, and he punches it up to about the 34-yard line. You'll notice Jake Morris is now wearing a visor. He broke his nose. Last week against Morningside happened uh, tail end of the first half. They just held him out and iced it for for uh, for the second half, and he's good to go. Just wearing a shield now, so he doesn't get a stray fist or arm on that nose. Took a lot of kidding this week. He used to be a good-looking boy. <laughs> now he's got a bump and a black nose on the nose. Second down now from the 34, and this time it's Matt Roller, the fullback from Devil's Lake, and he moves it ahead to the 39-yard line. It'll be third and short for the Seuss and Schrantz. And Sidlachik wide to the right on second down. But it's Philip Moore, and he is collared after a brief gain there. Ben Oneman, number 40, making the stop for North Dakota State. Switches to fullback, and Schrantz goes in motion. The fake to Phillip. Blancher with a lot of time, but now he's in trouble. Down he goes. Clint Gelstad in on the stop along with Jeff Westrom. Howdy Lawler also. Or Howdy Lawler. And he's going to have to take a break here. I think he hurt his arm a little bit, and he'll go to the sidelines. We'll Try and get an injury update on there. They can hardly afford to lose Howdy Lawler, the senior from Watford City, who has really elevated his play. Not big, but really has a huge second and goal now, this time from the 10. Hapes in motion. Blanchard into the corner for Graf. Touchdown! to play, we're all tied at seven. 20 plays. Consuming 10 minutes and 18 wow. seconds. You know what they say, the best defense is the one sitting on the bench. That's exactly what Roger Thomas said yesterday. But the Sewer back in the game, and here's Shane Allen with a low kick, and it bounces off Zez's hands, but he recovers. And Zezza has some room. Nino Zezza trying to avoid the coverage, picking up to the 45 and finally stopped at the 47-yard line. And it was the kicker, Shane Allen, who finally put an end to it. Zezza had been averaging just 17 yards of return. In fact, they've kind of been flip-flopping players back there trying to find the right combination. And the wedge busters just didn't get it done for the Sioux. The Bison had some great blocking up front. And then it's Zezza from Stillwater, but he played at Matamidi.